Uh, probably more than anything, it's just the approach uh, yesterday, just to come in and con continue to work at it. You know, we these shared experiences of these, uh, you know, tough games, close games on the road. Um, these are invaluable. Um, it doesn't always go the way you want it to go, but, uh, you know, how you approach it and are you learning from it? Are you trying to get better at it? There's no guarantee that even after a day like yesterday that um, that will ensure a win t uh, tonight. Um, but, you know, I, I really I do like the, the approach of this group uh, just to come in and, and try to continue to get better every single day. And then obviously we had some big plays down the stretch. Um, Gabe was really uh, good, got going in, in that second half. Um, we're just trying to find solutions against a very good defense. Uh, Kyle, um, you know, had some really uh, aggressive, timely plays. Uh, and then Jimmy, those two plays, uh, you know, down the stretch, um, you know, were key. But at least we we're more organized. It always helps if the ball goes in. Um, it was just a very competitive game against two really good teams. All right, up next we have Ira Windeman. Go ahead. Eric, it obviously was an ensemble victory. Uh, guys helped setting you up to the finish. Duncan hitting the threes, Gabe scoring 11 early in the fourth quarter, uh, Max providing a boost when needed, and then sort of Jimmy and Kyle carrying you through the finish line there. What's it like to get that kind of ensemble performance sort of of guys doing enough to keep you afloat until Jimmy and Kyle can have their moments of truth? Well, that, that's usually the deal when you play against really good teams. Uh, you're going to need a lot of contributions. You're going to have to have, um, you know, basically your entire rotation putting their fingerprints, uh, you know, on on a game uh, to impact the win. And, and that's what you saw tonight. Uh, Tyler was out, so different guys had to step up. Uh, it wasn't as if, you know, Gabe was trying to be Tyler either. Um, mm -hmm. It wasn't. Those were, you know, open shots that, uh, you know, he just took within the context of the game and, and he got into a great rhythm, you know, in that, in that fourth quarter. But, uh, you know, if, it, if we didn't have Duncan making those, those plays and then Max, you know, giving us some really uh, quality minutes, um, you know, uh, Kyle and, and Jimmy wouldn't have had that opportunity to close it out for us uh, going down the stretch. Did you see the Dwayne Deadman play? Did someone tell you what happened? It, it seems such a freak play because if that cushion wasn't freestanding on the yeah, seat, it wouldn't have flown. I, I think he underestimated, you know, how strong he was. I did not see it. Um, you know, James um, and the officiating crew basically uh, interpreted the letter to the law on it, you know, that I guess the pad went into the stands, but that was not Dwayne's intention at all. Um you know, so when we brought it in, we made him player of the game. <laughs> Did he get to keep the cushion? No, he just get to, he got to bring us in and have a message for our team. Um, could there have been a better Thanksgiving weekend for Max Struess than getting to go home, getting honored, and then having meaningful moments in front of his hometown crowd? Yeah, that was fun. You know, we, we really enjoy uh, that the journeys of guys that uh, – are like Max, you know, guys that are undrafted, that's take a different path uh, into this league. It, it just shows you there's so many different ways um, that you can make it in this league. Um, you know, and Max, you know, has that that unique uh, grit as well. He didn't play the, you know, the two games before and a lot of young players would probably be, you know, frustrated. And uh, what he did yesterday was come in an hour early before our practice, uh, got in a bunch of extra work and, and then it doesn't guarantee anything, but that's just who he is. Um, and it was just a really, you know, really cool 24 hours uh, to be able to participate in that uh, at DePaul yesterday. And then, you know, he had his great moments tonight. And then last one for me, uh, you're at the 20 game mark, the quarter poll. Um, your thoughts generally on where your team stand through the first quarter of the season, please. We are where we are. Uh, I'm not going to give a grade and I'm not at all uh, – in that state right now uh, mm -hmm. to give, uh, you know, uh, an analysis of where we are. We're just grinding. You know, we've, we've had these really, um, you know, good, tough, uh, competitive experiences on the road, you know, and this is the way it is uh, on the road. And uh, I, I think we've gotten better, you know, from these experiences, but we're going to have to, you know, continue to prove that, uh, you know, every game. Thank you, Eric. Thanks. All right, up next, we have Cooper Moorhead, heat.com. Go ahead. Okay, so that, uh, that ATO in the final 30 seconds, was that a great read by Kyle, or is that designed to happen that way? 
to happen uh, which way? Where you got the back door for the layup. No, uh, that's just a release. Uh, we thought that they were going to trap, and he just read it great uh, because the possession before, um, they weren't fouling. They were trying to trap and create some turnovers, which that's what they do. You know, they're very quick and do a great job getting deflections. Um, so we anticipated a, a possible trap, and he just read it great, you know, for the give and go. Uh, really just gave us a, that needed separation. And then you guys have been the victim of a couple fourth quarters where the other team just started hitting threes lately. Is this just kind of the modern NBA where some nights you need that to push you over the edge to, to hit five threes in a quarter? Uh, well, you know, from our standpoint, we felt that we have to do things better. Um, you know, and that, that's what we've been working on diligently, you know, and sometimes uh, it doesn't happen on, on your timeline. You know, we've all been, you know, disappointed by, by some of these uh, – Tough losses, particularly on the road, um, but we just get back at it the next day and try to uh, correct some things, get better, um, and then fortunately we we're able to make some plays. You know, sometimes it is make or miss. You know, we, uh, either way. But I thought our disposition was was good. You know, against a very uh, talented offensive uh, team, they uh, they move the ball great. Um, you know, they have scoring uh, and at a lot of different places um so you have to be on point you have to make some plays and and uh you know the guys did and we had some really key deflections and stops to rebounds you know to seal that that's what's really been missing you know probably as much as anything in some of these close games uh, thank you all right that's it for the zoom portion if there's any in the, in the room go ahead If it gets to a team like this, is it kind of more ball security and being close? Yeah, not let them run, you know, yeah. run transition. Yeah, and, and the context for us is we've had some tough turnovers in, in some of these close games on the road. Um, but we knew coming into that, into this game in particular, um, you know, that's what Chicago does extremely well. You know, they, they have great quickness and anticipation. Um, and instincts, you know, to get deflections uh, on the perimeter. And, and we knew that we'd have to, you know, really uh, take care of the ball, control the, the, uh, the, the game from that standpoint. Um, they're, they're similar to us. If they, they turn you over and they get those in transition, that just those relief points just become too overwhelming.